Hey, pleasant good evening, everyone. I'm Joey Jackson, and this is Crime and Justice. You know, summer temps have been scorching around the country. In Arizona, it's been over 100 degrees. Now, that's where 41-year-old Frank Pineda died this week. He's a father of seven, and he was in need of an air conditioner. But Frank didn't die from the heat. Police say his handyman shot him, the guy he hired to install the AC. I don't know how many servicemen go to somebody's house with a gun. But Robert Moore told the cops that he needed that gun, saying Frank suddenly attacked him, punching him repeatedly in the face after demanding that he return half of his pay. Now, Moore says that he shot Frank in self-defense. That's who you see there, adding that he feared for his life. But cops say there are problems with his story, like the fact that he had no bruises from that apparent violent attack. You see him right there. So joining me now. Is David Mack. He's a syndicated talk show host. Fernando Pineda, he is the brother of the victim in this story. And Randy Sutton, he is a retired police, lieut police lieutenant and defense attorney and author of the code Parag Shah. And so let's get right into it. Dave Mack, let's talk about this. Nothing about this particular story makes sense to me. Apparently there's a handyman who's making the claim of self-defense. There was no indication of any types of violence or any struggle or, you know, any noise prior to this occurring. Uh, the gunshot was in a place, from my understanding, to the back of the head. That may be improper or wrong. Correct me if I am. And just set this up and tell me whether the claims he's asserting that is the handyman make any sense at all. This handyman is telling a story like a six-year-old would tell. He couldn't even keep it straight, Joey, from the standpoint of saying that he was being beat on the right side of his face or the left side and, and then complaining about the opposite side. Everything about Moore's story is bogus, every bit of it. At 26 years old, the man is an accomplished liar and not a very good one. But the bottom line is we have absolutely no motive his story doesn't make any sense whatsoever, and I agree with one of the family members. What kind of handyman shows up at your house packing heat in his front pocket? Yeah, that that's so true, Dave. And so tell me, because, you know, as we would imagine, the story not making sense, he was hitting the right jaw, the left door, it's self-defense, but he's the one that called 911, correct? Yeah, he did. He walked away from the scene. He called it down the street. He calls 911, and that's how he had time to concoct his, his story. He claims that he was apparently paid $200 for the job, but that uh, Mr. Pineda uh, wanted demanded half the money back, and then he started accosting him. And he said he was left with no choice but to shoot him. A couple problems here, though, Joey. The man was shot in the back of the head, according to Moore himself, at close range. Well, the police found none of the evidence that would indicate that he was shot at close range in the back of the head. No stippling, nothing like that. And, of course, they even waited a couple of days taking pictures of Mr. Moore the day of this event. And then they waited a couple of days because sometimes bruises do come out later. Well, they yeah. didn't. And you can see from the pictures, this guy hadn't been in a fight. But on top of that, Mr. Pineda, he has no markings on his hands at all like he had done anything, uh, according to what Mr. Moore has claimed. You know, Dave Mack, that's the interesting thing, because people can say any story, but the evidence, when it contradicts it, it becomes problematic. Now, we have his brother here who I want to get to, uh, Fernando Pineda. I'd like to speak to you if I can. Uh, and before I do, and obviously we're very, very sorry for your loss, all of us here uh, at Crime and Justice. I want to, though, because he had Thank some you. words to say in court. Of course, uh, we're here and we pray for you. He had some words to say in court that I'd like you to listen to. And after we play what he's saying and has said to the judge, we want to get your response or your take on his defense. Listen to this. Mr. Moore's account was that he shot the uh, victim in self-defense because the victim was on top of him. Uh, there was absolutely no blood uh, from a gunshot wound to the head found on Mr. Moore. There was no male. Mr. Moore. Yeah. So this is what this is what we talked about before, Fernando, with regard to the lack of evidence. And now, uh, just before getting your r response, I want you to hear what he actually said to the judge in court concerning how he had to defend himself. Is there anything you would like me to know at this time only about the decision on release conditions and what the bond would be? I've never done anything wrong in my life, ma'am. I'm, I'm a law abiding citizen. I will not go anywhere. I just want to get to work where I can pay for a lawyer to save my life from saving my life. 
I mean, I saved it. Now you guys are trying to ruin it for me. I saved my life, sir. Like, I was in fear for my life. And I saved it. Now you guys are ruining it for me. Like, ruining this life I saved. That's all I want to say. So, Fernando, he kills your brother, but it's all about him, and he had to save his life, and the evidence seems to contradict that. Uh, what say you as to what actually happened here? Well, I, I, first off, I'd like to make something, you know, clear up something. Uh, Please. We found out now the, the truth that he was shot in the head and the forehead above his right eye. So that kind of changes the whole scenario even more because okay. of the fact that he faced him and from a distance shot him. Can, can I because ask you, Fernando? I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just want to clarify what you're saying. So the you initial the initial reports were the back of the head. Now we know yeah. that it was the front of the head and the forehead. You mentioned something about shooting him from a distance. Do you have any indication how far that distance was? I'm, I'm not sure. I'm just going basically on, on the reports from, from the detective. Yes. Uh, uh, and second off, he was right about one thing. He he thought that he had saved his life by leaving my brother there on the ground, bleeding to death, and thinking that he could get away with it because he thought my brother was just a nobody and he could put this idea together and get away with it, that he's a repairman and it was self-defense. Yeah. That's what he means when I just saved my life and now you guys are ruining it. Uh, now that's, for what, that's what he means. Sure. Now, Fernando, did you have any dealings with this handyman prior to this? Do you know if your we brother had, had any dealings had no, with him? We had no clue who he was or where he came from. Later, after the fact, around the neighborhood, the rumors start flying that he was well known around the neighborhood as a drug addict and that he frequent, you know, people that lived out by where we were at, you know, often. So they all knew who this guy was. You know, the idea of him having the gun was because of all the people that he had burned in the past that had it out for him. This is all coming out now. But what I want people to understand is that my brother was a fun, loving, happy going. He, he, he no way. If, if he was, he had a few pounds on this guy. Right. If for any reason my brother hit him once, twice, three times, they would have been taking my brother to jail. And so, my brother, my brother in the hospital, I held his hand and I looked because I wanted to see if there was some struggle or something. His hands were perfect. Perfect. Fernando, what's your theory as to what happened here that led to your brother being senselessly killed? My, brother, my brother's trade was an electrician, okay? My brother didn't know about how to fix it. It was, it was a unique type of AC unit. What we believe and what we think happened is he helped him do it. He helped him installing and, and, and drilling the holes in the wall. He, he was helping this guy do this job. Okay? Yes. We think as he was outside around the house putting holes in the wall, we think that may or in the, in the house, maybe he was in the house, because the garage was set up for his, for his, his father-in-law. So he... Frank might have been coming out of the house into the garage and caught him going through his father-in-law's stuff. At that point, my brother, yes, he probably would have, he probably was on his way to, to destroy this man. Okay. So you he think he... caught and, and shot him. So you think he caught him in the act of potentially rummaging through items? That's the only items. thing that can make any sense. It's the uh, only thing. I mean, uh, this, it, 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 it's senseless regardless, but that's... That's the clearest picture we have right now. And, and Fernando, if you could just tell us, uh, how are his children? We understand that he had seven children, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yes, and, and, and his children are tore apart. Damn. Their dad was their world. He was their, the, his children were his world, his wife, he loved her. Everything that he was accomplishing to this point was for his family. And nobody ever thought that he wouldn't be here anymore. So everybody is just in shock. People that know him, friends, people that we don't even know have been reaching out to us. He was loved. And he Fernan loved people. Fernando Pineda, you're very brave to be here. I'm going to come back to you uh, momentarily because I want to ask you about your you know, most favorable memory uh, of your brother in addition to the legacy he leaves. But let me... Uh,
come back to you momentarily. I just want to pivot to the defense attorney we have here. That's Barack Shah. He's the author of the code because I want to get into what, if any, defenses there might be. Uh, good to have you on the program. Thank you. Um, what viable defenses do you see for him? Of course, you know that he's asserting, Parag, that this was some type of self-defense. It seems to be contradictory to what the evidence indicates. Uh, what say you? Well, let me first start by saying that I agree with the brother, since he mentioned the drugs, that this possibly was a crime of opportunity. But because the self-defense story is so crazy, the only defense I can think of is some type of delusional compulsion. Basically, what that means is that if you're having a delusion where someone is attacking you and in that delusion you act in self-defense, then that is essentially a type of insanity plea that can basically... Um, alleviate you from being convicted of a crime. Now, if they do the, if they go into his history, has no mental health histories, they do an evaluation, he doesn't have a delusional compulsion defense, then unfortunately you have to ride with the defense he gave you. And that's why we always say you have the right to remain silent, stay silent. Because in my cases, sometimes when they tell a story, sometimes you have to ride that story to trial and most yeah. likely you could be convicted from it. And, and therein lies the problem. I wanna to get to you, Randy Sutton, regarding the evidence, if you could just briefly let us know. I mean, the evidence points one way and his defense points to another. How do you think that helps the prosecution's case? Well, this is a classic case of, of an investigative uh, response to um, a, a claim of self-defense. The law enforcement uh, are, are doing forensic evidence. They're looking at the ballistics. They're looking at the, um, uh, all of the, the physical evidence along with what this guy's claim is. His claim doesn't make any sense. So no. when just on the face of it, uh, you understand that law enforcement probably um, from the very outset didn't believe him. But there's a tremendous amount of evidence that will help convict him. And included yeah. in that is not only did they find the, the weapon that he used, but they also found narcotics when they when they did the search warrant. Uh, they, they found all kinds of contradictory stuff. And... This is, uh, I think, I, I agree with uh, Fernando. I think it was Doesn't probably a crime of opportunity. Indeed. Now, Fernando Absolutely. Pineda, let me, let me end it with you. Uh, Fernando, just, uh, can you just, in one word or two, just tell us uh, what's, what's the best legacy your brother leaves? You know, he, he, he showed us all how to treat each other with love and respect towards each other. It didn't matter who you were or, or, or what your circumstances was. He, he made a friend with everybody he met, and uh, he was—he he was just trying. He was going to school. He wanted to be in behavioral health. He wanted to help others, you know, with with problems and, and situations and kids. I mean, he, he was doing all the right things, and uh, he got some very huge feet to fill, boots to fill because. Uh, Again, you know, Fernando, we pray for you. We pray for your family. You're very brave to be here. Uh, God bless you, and may justice be achieved in this particular case. Thank you very case. much. Thank and, you. I appreciate Thank all you. your help. Thank you. Indeed. Okay, as we move forward, just days.